it is another beautiful summer sunset. I'm kind of sad because summer is coming to a close, so I'm trying to enjoy every minute of it. And speaking of enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with the AK4500. Today, I'm gonna be talking about gimbals and I wanna talk about my experience with the AK4500 and also how to make your gimbal footage more cinematic. And I have a small confession to make before I do this video and that's I've never owned a gimbal before. I've just never really needed it. I, I've used them on my commercial sets, you know, like films like Beauty and the Battle. I used a ton of gimbals and I got to operate it. And even our most recent documentary, No Country is an Island, which you can watch the trailer now, we use the gimbal a lot for then. But I often find I like handheld filmmaking more. So I was really excited to use the AK4500, put it through the paces, see if it's something I want to include in my filmmaking arsenal and I actually really enjoyed it so I'll be talking about that today this video is gonna be a two-part thing I'll begin by talking a little bit about the AK 4500 and, and then talking more about how to make your gimbal footage more cinematic the mistakes that I see so let's talk about gimbals and I should say something right off the top this video is not sponsored I'm not getting paid to say any of this but the lovely people at Fiutech did send me this gimbal. And as I mentioned, I've never owned a gimbal, so when they said to send it to me, I thought, yeah, I'm probably actually one of the perfect people to review this because if I can get it working on my own with no one else helping me, then it's probably a good gimbal for you to try out if you haven't used them that much. And I'm kind of not an early technology adopter. I like to wait and, and, and bless your heart if you're the people who like to buy things right away, like 360 cameras and all that. But I kind of wait till the technology gets into a place where I can just pick it up and work with it right away. That's why I actually only bought my first drone less than a year ago because before that I didn't feel like drones were where I wanted them to be and then they released the Mavic 2 with 10-bit, easy to use and I thought okay great I'll buy that, I can work with that. And I want to give this the proper review, I'll talk a bit more about that in this video and if you want to know more about it maybe I can release a full review video, leave a comment below if you want that. But I do use gimbals on my professional films when I'm working on commercial world and all that and I actually get to operate them a lot and we get some pretty cool stuff and Beauty and the Battle we used the gimbal almost exclusively non-stop but today I wanted to talk about the biggest mistakes that I see with gimbal work and I'll be talking a bit about my experience with the 4500 it actually performed really well when I used it for the first time the thing that was failing me was my a7 III it was so frustrating how bad the autofocus was and I don't know if that's because I was shooting in S-Log2 and there was backlighting but whatever this a7 III was doing yesterday was terrible it was so frustrating but I'm not here to talk about Sony cameras I'm here to talk about gimbals and especially the 4500 here I mean first off I can say a few things I really liked about it one especially is this handle it is the best thing about this gimbal besides how smooth it is this handle allows you to go into like a low mode and hold the camera the way you normally do if you're someone like me who does handheld and holds the camera by a top handle a lot this really felt familiar this was nice i had controls here you can hit record you can even move the gimbal around with this i think they call it what do they call it the 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 lightsaber um, wizard wizard one the mastery wizard one on the, the magic force stick I, I don't know I'll put the name right here I, I know it had some kind of cool name for it but yeah I loved this feature it was really cool and I should say this I don't set up gimbals that often on my own actually I don't think I ever have on my own and I did this one on my own and I feel like a big boy I feel like I did it but I, I did it fairly quickly there's great resources online they give you a little manual in the box that was super easy to follow along and was pretty impressed how easy it was so it's a great starter gimbal they have smaller ones in the 4500 but I like the 4500 because the motors are better and you can throw on big cameras I've actually seen people put red cameras on this so I'm interested to try that out so balancing it isn't too difficult actually the most important thing I could say about this rig is make sure you use this wing nut here to fasten in the wizard wand you really need that there or else the whole stick can come out of the gimbal and one of my pet peeves with gimbals and drones and everything is these apps that you have to get and and they're supposed to sync 
and they half the time they're glitchy. But man, the app for this, I would open it up and just click on gimbal and it would automatically find the 4500 and there was no glitches, barely any lag and right away I was able to control the gimbal with my phone. It wasn't like when you have to send photos from your camera to your phone, you have to connect to a Wi-Fi and do a QR code, none of that. It just automatically grabbed the gimbal and I could control it right away. Even when my phone was asleep for 10 minutes, I would open it back up and I could control the gimbal and do little settings adjustments right away. Really, really love that. Overall, very impressed. I highly recommend it. I'll put a link below to the AK4500 if you want to check it out. It's fairly affordable. I mean, 750 US for this whole rig and it, it came with so much. There's an extending stick and I, I was quite impressed. But what I wanted to talk about today is how to make your gimbal work more cinematic. Because you see a lot of gimbal work out there and it just doesn't always feel right or feel as cinematic as it could be. So I would say the first tip is getting the right lenses on your gimbal. It's really sad that you see people spend all this money on a gimbal and they get all the accessories and the monitors and then they just throw the crappiest lens on the front of the camera. They'll use a kit lens that's not sharp and looks a bit mediocre and maybe doesn't really have that interesting bokeh and they'll be spending all this money and time on these beautiful camera shots when if they just change the lens it would make their work look a lot better. I've always said this that I would rather have one really good lens than three mediocre lenses. And so if you're gonna spend any money on gear in the next year, it should be lenses. Because ultimately the lens captures everything that is hitting your sensor. Now I know lenses get expensive, but like I was saying, if you're gonna be spending money on your gear, on your kit, spend it on a lens. When it comes to gimbal work, probably my favorite lens to use on a gimbal is either a 16 to 35, like I have on my a7 III right now, or something like a 24 mil, something that's a bit wider, because the wider the lens you have, the more it accentuates movement. So get something that's nice and crisp, something that you can get pretty shallow depth of field on if you need. I shot all this footage you're seeing here on the 16 35 at 2.8, which really helped. And the second thing to make your footage more cinematic on a gimbal is actually a mistake that a lot of people make, and that is exposure. You need to nail your exposure. You see people shooting on a gimbal and they'll never touch their camera settings because they just assume I'm doing cool moves here, I'm going up high, I'm going down low, I'm running behind my person and they don't take the time to check their exposure or review the shot after and make sure they got the right exposure. Because when you start letting your skies get super blown out or the skin tones are getting blown out, it just looks like video and it looks like crappy footage. Why would you spend all this time focusing on a camera movement and then forget about your exposure forget about the information that's hitting your sensor so if you can focus on your exposure just as much as the camera move your footage will look a lot better it'll be way easier to color correct and you'll be able to get a cinematic look so this footage that I shot today was with Julian and we were in the middle of the day that was the only time that we could shoot it and I hate shooting in the middle of the day so what I did is I went to the forest here in High Park in Toronto and we shot in the shade as much as we could or tried to get some dappling light something that made it look different that we didn't just have to shoot in direct sunlight so what you can do is if you're in the middle of the day you can find shade you can find areas where there's cool silhouettes but ultimately the most important thing is that you're monitoring your exposure the next tip I would say is planning you kind of see this a lot with people with drones they get the drone in the air and they just have no plan they just start flying around and they hope for the best Kind of the same thing happens with gimbals. You'll get your gimbal all balanced, you'll get your camera on there, maybe you'll take the time to hopefully nail your exposure, and then you have no plan. Your subject's there and you just start running around them, hoping for the best, hoping that it'll all work out. But just doing a little bit of planning, just explaining to your talent where they should go and what you're trying to achieve, and maybe you even practicing it once or twice, will make a world of difference. Because those moments in your shot where you're adjusting and the camera starts panning crazy or you're losing your subject in the center of the frame, then that is when it starts feeling like someone who's just searching for a shot on a gimbal. The more you can plan your shot on the gimbal and figure out what you're doing, the better your shot will look like. This is so important. This is the difference between professionals and amateurs in filmmaking is the planning part. Professionals aren't just good and it actually all works out for them because they're so good. No, they plan their shots, they communicate to their talent, their crew, everyone around them of what they're trying to achieve and that's why their shots look so good. So if you have a gimbal, make sure to start planning your shots. And sometimes these rigs get really heavy that it's annoying to carry them. So what I did on Beauty in the Battle is I would just walk around with my cell phone 
and plan out the shot with the DP and with the crew and show everyone on my cell phone. And when we are all agreed on how to do the shot, then we would pick up the gimbal so I would be fresh and ready to do it. But we had a plan, we knew where we were going and we knew what we were doing. And my last tip is, you know, hold your camera still fairly still and smooth. The gimbal can only correct so much camera shake or so much movement. If you're running and you're not holding the camera as level as you can, you're gonna be getting these big waves and bumps in it. And then the footage just looks like it was shot on a gimbal rather than this beautiful floating footage that you're trying to get with a gimbal. When you start noticing the movements it looks sloppy and it just takes you out of the moment when you're watching it so you can still achieve smoother movements if you're trying to be more smooth and delicate with the gimbal if you're just throwing it around it's not going to be able to correct everything and there's certain limits to the gimbal too I, I did full out sprints with this camera as I ran as fast as I could with Julian who was well a lot faster than me and I'll be running behind him and filming and man I just can't mention how much I love this feature having this handle sticking out there because I could just sprint along with it and it was fairly still you know there's eventually a moment when you're running with a gimbal that it just can't stop the force of your feet so I probably needed like a golf cart or something like that to go alongside Julian but I was really impressed I got to do some really fun stuff with this and it kept up for the most part so to recap those tips get a good lens one with some decent autofocus is always really helpful but make sure that you have the best lens that you can afford for that situation because it will change your footage dramatically Number two, don't forget about good exposure. It's something that people forget about because they just have it on the gimbal. They just think I can shoot at 2.8 all day or never have to adjust the ND filter. But number three is plan your shot. Don't just pick up the gimbal and hope for the best. Make a plan, talk to the people you're on set with and you'll get way better shots because it just won't look like someone searching for something cool. And number four is still try to hold your gimbal fairly still. If you're sloppy with it, the footage will look sloppy. It can only correct so much. Yeah, but thanks for watching. If you want to know more about the AK4500, uh, leave a comment below. I would be happy to do a full review video. Like I said, I don't do many gear reviews, but happy to talk about my experiences more in depth with this thing. I do recommend it. It was pretty easy to use, and I got to do some fun stuff, and man, this top handle they have on it is just the best feature I've seen on a gimbal lately. But I also have some uh, exciting news coming up uh, that I'll be announcing on this channel in a couple weeks maybe, maybe next week. We'll see how things are going. But until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.